Hey, what up guys, and welcome back to the channel. This is MakeCloud. Today we're gonna to do something a little differently. I'm gonna teach you guys today. I'm gonna to teach you guys about equalizing, what an equalizer is, EQing, all that good stuff. Let's get into it. So for me, I'm on FL, so this, this pretty much goes hand in hand with any type of DAW that you have, Logic, Ableton, all the above, any of those plugins. Like right now I have Fab Filter Pro Q3, which is my kind of go-to plugin at the moment. It's really good. If you're on FL, you have Pro Q, not Pro Q, Parametric EQ2. They actually did a nice, beautiful update on. An equalizer, his job is to raise and lower the frequencies in a frequency spectrum. That way different sounds and different elements can fit more cohesively in your track. So for example, so I have, I brought up this little sample right here. I'll play it for you guys. It'd probably help if I routed it to the, where the EQ is so you guys can see it. So there you go. So you can see it right here. It's very low, mid, heavy, a little bit of highs and trouble going on over here. Not too much sub. Obviously, you always want to use your ear. Whenever, whenever you're EQing anything, really EQing compression, anything like that, you always want to use your ear because your ear is going to tell you what's right. Technology has come a long way to where this is a lot more accurate, but nothing as accurate is as your ear. Okay, so if you're on FL Studio and you want to get this little histogram right here, you want to go to this arrow and then click on enable right here. What they normally have, what they normally have um, on for the Fruity Parametric EQ, they'll have the heat map. So this is what yours will typically look like. They made this new update to where you can add a histogram right here, just like Parametric EQ2. And then you can also add the heat map on top of that and then put it right in there as well. It gives it a nice little, nice little vibe, you know. Music is all about aesthetic as well, so it helps to kind of have that, but I kind of just like the histogram itself. But anyway, going on to that. On the left right here, I have my drums. You can see it has some subs from the kick, a little bass from the kick as well. Kind of pretty much a full spectrum, right? I'm gonna add in the keys. See, that's not too bad, but I wanna clean that up a little bit. So you can see to where right here, there's just a little bit of bass frequencies that I don't really want that much from the keys itself. So what I'm gonna do is, is what's called a high pass filter or a low cut to get rid of those frequencies. That way, whenever my kick and snare come in, those keys are out of the way and those keys are sitting nicely within like the mid and high range because that's where it's kind of, you can kind of hear it. It's very midsies little bit of highs in there. So you can even look, I can even see like there's pretty much mids here, a little bit of highs going on here, a little bit of trouble, but I don't want to get rid of all of that. Some people will tell you just to do straight 300 hertz cut. I don't like doing that. Like that's what I'm saying, follow your ear. So what I'm gonna do is on this right one, on this right channel right here, on this right EQ, I'll just exit out of the other one. So this is my piano. And I'm gonna grab this, this band one, I'm gonna go to type, I'm gonna go to high pass, and I'm gonna go ahead and make this a little bit steeper. I'm gonna bring this over and just listen. Look at that. You can hear, you can hear the drums come out a little bit more, but you can still hear that piano. And it's not right at 300. If I was to go right at 300, you're gonna cut out all, you hear that? It's, it's just flat, like you lose all, all that, that good key essence, you know? So I wanna bring a little bit of that back in. Just enough to where I can hear the kick in the drum nicely and the piano and stuff are still sitting nicely together. 
maybe even boost a little bit of a frequency in the highs since I took away a lot of those lows, just to kind of fill it back up a little bit. It already sounds a lot nicer. All right, so this is before. It's very muddy, you know, the, you can hear the, the 808, or the, the keys are kind of clashing with the drums right there, and I'm gonna activate that EQ. I'm gonna bring this down so you guys can see it. I'm gonna activate this EQ. Night, a lot cleaner, a lot cleaner. As you start adding different things, different elements to your track, you need to make space for your other elements in your trap to and in your track to have room to breathe to so you can actually feel them. So that way they're not they don't feel like they're all just just muddying up together. The mids and the lows are pretty much the troublemakers for this. This is where I feel like, you know, you're gonna be really in most of my mixing, I cut out a lot of the low end and stuff like that, besides like the kick and the 808. All right, so now that I have my kick pattern on top, I'm gonna take this drum loop and I'm gonna EQ a good portion of those lows and mids out of the way to make room for my new kick and my new 808. I'll go ahead and mute the keys, that way you can just hear exactly what I want you to hear. Do the same thing. I'm gonna grab a high pass. Boom. Just keep listening. You can hear that kick and 808 finally starting to shine a little bit more. All right, I'm gonna give you a little before and after. Also, with this, if you can't, you should be able to hear a good portion of what's going on. Um, but a lot of it's going to be low and mid heavy. So if you don't have a good pair of headphones or some monitors or this and that, you might not be able to hear all the little surgical tweaks I'm doing and this and that. Um, but if not, just follow along anyways, and I hope you learn something. It's so back to it. So just a little before and after. So this is before, before my EQing. The lows, mids are really muddy. Activate it. The kick comes out punchy more. Now just kind of go through and just make adjustments. Make sure everything's good. Okay guys, so just to kind of go over everything, an EQ is used to show you the spectrum, the, the frequency spectrum. Sometimes they show you, sometimes they don't. To show you the frequency spectrum within the sound that you're using, routing it to. You can lower or raise the volume of the frequencies within that frequency spectrum to make room and clear up some space for other instruments. You can do so such as like a, a, a high pass which is passing the highs, as you can see here, the highs over here in this filter is passing the highs or it's called a low cut, it's cutting the lows. Then you have the opposite, a low pass, which is doing the opposite. It's cutting the, it's cutting the highs, but passing the lows or it's called also a high cut. But anyway, I hope you guys learned something today. If you wanna see more stuff like this, tips, tutorials, tips and tricks, FL Studio work and stuff like that, like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. All that good stuff. I'll see you guys next time. This is May Cloud. Later.